Good morning, students. Thank you to those of you who turned in your papers on Wednesday. Uh, if you have not done so yet, please do as soon as you can. I know these are challenging times, and I'm looking forward to seeing your papers and so we can finish the semester successfully. Our topic today is the 1960s and the 1970s. The political landscape looked like this in the 60s and 70s. 1960, we had John F. Kennedy, the age of Camelot. He was elected in 1960, assassinated in 63. Features of his term were he did reduce taxes. The economy was given a boost with that. Uh, he had, uh, diplomatically, he had the Bay of Pigs fiasco but then redeemed himself substantially, I would say, with the, uh, the way he handled the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, after his assassination, we have Lyndon Bain Johnson, who came in, the Texan, the tall Texan. Features of his administration were the Great Society, in which he greatly increased the uh, size, scope, uh, bureaucracy, of the federal government with all those alphabet agencies. Then, um, of course, he also, under his regime, under his administration, we have the escalation in Vietnam. He chose not, so he finished out Kennedy's term. He chose not to stand for re-election in 68. So in 68, we have Richard Nixon coming in. Uh, features of the Nixon administration are he ended the Vietnam War through his superb handling diplomatically with the aid of Henry Kissinger. Real politique was his hallmark. Um, Nixon did something that no previous president had done. He dared to go to communist China. And with his negotiate, with appearing there in China, it also made it so that uh, it was possible to achieve some bargaining at, uh, with the Vietnam War. Wound up down that war um, in the face of his uh, Watergate situation scandal, he was forced to resign in 74. Gerald Ford came in, a caretaker sort of nice guy, presidency. Uh, to his credit, he did pardon Nixon. Nixon's stature has increased as the years have gone by. Ford did not stand for, re um, let's see, we have 76. Uh, Jimmy Carter comes in, another nice guy, probably one of our most ineffectual presidents. His um, administration was marked by what we call stagflation. Stagflation is that unfortunate combination of high unemployment and high infl inflation, something that economists thought was not possible. Um, so he did not, um, he, had a, he was a one-term president, and then we have 1980, the election of Ronald Reagan. And his two-term presidency. So that's the political landscape uh, that existed in the 60s and the 70s. The 60s, we term, we have this nomenclature that we talk about when we talk about the 60s. We talk about it being the turbulent 60s, the radical 60s, the time of student activism, the time of the counterculture. It's known for 1969 Woodstock, with uh, the, the idea being that it was all about drugs, sex, and rock and roll. So one thing that's important to understand as we label these generations, and these were the, 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 the era where the baby boomers came of age in the 60s. When a, a thing that we need to remember is that these, when we characterize these generations, it means that there is a certain feature or an aspect 
to these generations. It does not wholly describe these generations because in the 1960s and in the late, late 1960s when we have we have all kinds of student unrest we also have plenty of students that are in their um, workplace doing a job their first job out of high school we have uh, in a, we have students that are in th their colleges they're in the libraries, they're in the classrooms, they're being productive. So it's also an era where we have uh, y the youth, young people just emerging into adulthood, not taking place, not, not being radicalized, not engaging in, in uh, drugs and sex and this rock and roll uh, definition that we see. It was, however, a feature of it. And by the way, visual images are great. I'm sorry I don't have my PowerPoint here to show you. Go on Canvas and you can see these images of what the fashion looked like, what the music looked like in the 60s. And it gives you a, a nice visual aid of what that was like. It's, and, and as I'm saying, um, I know there is a, an, a, a, a visual aid there, a photo of the 1969 man on, uh, first man on the moon. We see Buzz Aldrin walking on the moon, an extraordinary achievement. So a lot of productive um, progress and events happened during the 60s. It wasn't all the dark side. It wasn't all the negative features. I, I didn't mention the uh, civil rights situation in the 1960s. And of course, we have an increase, and, and I, I think in previous lectures I've alluded to this, an increasing violence and radicalism it, as one aspect of the civil rights movement. We have riots in Watts where people are killed, millions of dollars of property damage done, other big cities in the mid-1960s experienced violence and riots. This is before King's assassination in 1968, by the way. It's important to remember, again, in history, chronology is quite important. So people that want to point out the riots because of King's assassination forget that the riots took place in the mid-60s. Those were the worst riots in Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, all the big northern cities. It's also important to remember that this is simply one feature of the Civil Rights Movement. If you look on your PowerPoint, you will notice um, an, a, a picture of what was happening in the music industry in the 1960s in Memphis. And you see that if you look closely to Booker T and the MGs recording in Memphis at the Stax record recordings, studio that you have a mixed black and white band. So there was plenty of, I mean this is one aspect that often is not emphasized during the 60s, that there was oftentimes blacks and whites coming together and a lot of um, progress being made in civil rights. It wasn't all the bad news story of violence. Uh, Booker T, of course, was a, a, an amazing musician, and he worked hand-in-hand -hand with Steve Cropper and other whites in his band. This is just one example, a, 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 a really extraordinary example, I think, but there were other, certainly other examples of, um, in, of civil rights cooperation during the 60s between um, all the races, actually. Now, when we move to the 70s, the nomenclature that is often used is it is the me generation, the me generation. And this is something, a term that was coined by Thomas Wolfe. This is Thomas Wolfe, not Thomas Wolfe of You Can't Go Home Again, but Thomas Wolfe of The Bonfire of the Vanities. Different guy. He's a writer. They're both very talented. So, 
this me generation that came of age, it's the second wave of the baby boomers who would come of age, they had been born in the mid-50s. The me generation. Uh, we see in, the, in this 1970s, we see the end of the Vietnam War, under thanks to, to Nixon's progress there. But we also see in the post-Watergate era in 1975, after Nixon is gone, we see this fall of Saigon, that, that image, it's hard to get it out of your mind, of the, the South Vietnamese gambling, scram little, little thunder there and lightning, uh, scrambling to the top of the roof of the um, American embassy, not America's finest hour. So the me generation, I, I would say the same thing about the 70s as I said about the 60s. It's not the whole picture. There were certainly, certainly uh, people in the 70s that were doing productive things, that were not self-absorbed, that were not, that were out there doing good works and, and making progress in their lives. So I do want to just emphasize that. So also, it's, it's when we talk about the 60s versus the 70s, it's, it's really not a good way to look at it. it. History isn't marked off in decades, 10 years, then the next 10 years, then what happened in the 80s. It's good to keep chronology straight, but there's more of a flow. In many of the features of the 60s, were, were also apparent in the 70s. In some ways, that period of the late 60s to the mid 70s have a lot in common. So that is the um, kind of brief overview. Please do look on your canvas for the for more information on this period. I think the for those of you who like music and fashion. It's a time of tremendous productivity, and it's not all just the, the ragtag group that you see at Woodstock. There was a, people that saw Woodstock maybe started to dress in a more bohemian fashion, but they weren't dirty and scruffy. They, um, and, and in the 70s, you see this sort of mod look that evolves, and it's almost sort of pre-preppy in, in its look with the women wearing bright colors, uh, wear, wearing shorter hair, wearing the uh, what we call the newsboy caps, uh, on, and, and in bright colors, shorter skirts, but, but modest in terms of wearing leggings or something like that. It's not always just the, this image that we have of the decadent um, look. So, uh, and for you guys in the audience, you can look at the images of what the men were wearing. Bell bottoms were good, were, were fashionable. Probably not a good look, but, and the wide lapels, you see that. Even in dress wear, you see men in tuxes that will have very wide lapels with a little grain ribbon on it and so forth. Um, but we won't get too technical with the fashion because I know guys aren't, for the most part though, I know some of you are interested in it and maybe don't want to admit it, but I think it's interesting because as we look at fashion and music, we can see how it reflects the, the culture at large. So keep working, keep studying. We have one more topic to go. Uh, next time we will be, or <laughs> I will at least put it on in writing, if not visually, uh, on Blackboard or Canvas we have, it will be... Uh, Reagan and the end of the Cold War. So keep studying. I miss you all. See you next time.